Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tactical Talk with Mad Dog Armory. I am one of your hosts, Jillian Biltz, owner of Mad Dog Armory, and this is my trusty partner in crime, Shad Biltz. Hello. Uh, we are the founders of Mad Dog Armory, which is a retail uh, gun shop, actually two retail gun shops and um, training centers, and we are super passionate about education and uh, very excited that WeBeam TV gave us the opportunity to come to you every week, every Friday at 6 p.m. Um, on WeBeamTV.com, on YouTube. What was that, 6? 6 p.m.? What did I say? Why is it six o'clock? Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, so just in case you didn't was catch that. Audibly challenged. Okay, so <laughs> I was like, wait. I thought you were saying like the number of episodes. I'm like, I thought it was number yeah. nine. Oh my gosh. So um, <laughs> that would be <laughs> that nine. Um, so this is episode nine. <laughs> nine. Oh lord. Yeah, um, right. Episode nine. But we are come to you. <laughs> we come to you. He's throwing me off. You, we come to you every Friday at 6 p.m. Again on WeBeam TV. You can find us on YouTube. Um, just look up Tactical Talk, Facebook, uh, streams us live, I believe. I say that every Until week. Until they don't. And then I'm like, why don't I know if they stream us live or not? I'm pretty Maybe. sure it is. It's yeah, live, so. right? Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty sure it's live. live. Okay, and then you can always go back and watch our previous shows because they're pretty fabulous. Um, I'm a little bit... Um, partial, but I just really enjoy our shows and I kind of <laughs> write them and I look up content of stuff that I'd want to know. Um, right. You know, when I was a beginner or even advanced stuff, I love uh, the information that we pass along to you. So I hope you guys too, uh, do too. Um, so we are here to give you tons of information on the gun industry. We like to bring in certain products, um, do some educational stuff on training and things like that. So definitely go back and look at our previous shows, and uh, hopefully we can entertain you a little bit as well. He bit. does most I of try. the entertaining. Um, so I'm the sidekick. That's my job. Are you the sidekick? Yeah. Okay. Well, You're I'll, Johnny I'll take it. And I'm, who's that dude? Ed McMahon. Before my that's, time. That's going back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little before my time. Yeah. All right, so tactical talk. So super excited to be here. Um, our mission basically at Mad Dog Armory is very simple, uh, to provide training. Uh, we have two locations. We're very proud of those. We have our original location in Largo uh, in the Tampa Bay area in Pinellas County. And that one we opened in 2016. And um, we opened our second location in Tampa, South Tampa, uh, in uh -huh. May. Tampa proper in May of last year. So we're coming up on a year. Yeah. It really went quick. Yeah. Um, and so we're she really, really proud of those um, locations. And we're actually uh, in the process of franchising. So if you want to own your own Mad Dog Armory, we would love to chat with you about that. You could visit yeah. our website for more information, yeah. mdarmory.com, and click up at the top. Uh, it'll say franchising, and it'll have a little more information on that because gun shops are awesome. Yeah, yeah. And our gun shop especially is awesome, so why not have your own? Um, we have somebody coming in. Actually, I'm really excited about the end of the month. Uh, that's that's Kekalaki, right? South, oh, South, South, Kekalaki. South Carolina. Um, and he's gone through most of the process, so we're very excited to have him come and visit us and maybe be our first franchise in the state of South Carolina. Awesome. Yay. Mm -hmm. It has been nailed. Officially. Officially. All right. So today's show um, is going to be about uh, preventing firearm accidents. Uh, so we're going to give you... There's firearm accidents? <laughs> yes, there are. Hey. And they are completely and totally preventable um, for the 99% of the time, I would say. Not every single time, but 99.9% .9 of... And that's my own statistic. I didn't get that anywhere. Um, <laughs> just pull that right out of the air. Um, they are preventable. Um, so we're going to go over that and try to help reduce that. They also call accidental discharge unintentional gunfire. So either one of those we can use. We can call it whatever we want. Right. But it's just you don't want your gun to go off and right. it goes off. That's a problem. So it's usually user error um, and not following the gun safety rules. So we'll go through that. There's we're going to go save. <laughs> there are rules. Hmm. Yes. And you have to get to know them. Um, and then also safely storing your firearm. There are a few statutes that we'll kind of um, reference tonight about Florida. Again, we yeah, are Florida-based, Florida, Florida, yeah, yeah. Florida rules and regulations of safely storing your firearm. Because, um, again, we are in the Tampa Bay area. So uh, if you are watching from anywhere out of the area, 
it might be a little bit different, but we are going to reference Florida-specific rules. Ask Jeeves about it. He'll tell you all about it. Who is Jeeves? Is he a butler? Why am I thinking he's a butler? I'm like picturing like a guy with... Years ago, there used to be a search engine called Ask Jeeves. Like instead of before Google? Before Google. Yeah, before Google, <laughs> Sorry. there was Ask Jeeves, so I don't know. I have never heard of such a thing, but... Yes. Okay. You were a little chitlin at that point in time, gotcha. so you, you probably weren't TikToking away on the on the keyboards. TikToking with Jeeves. I mean, that should be the next name of our show, next show. <laughs> TikToking with Jeeves. <laughs> Ask Jeeves. Wow. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So last week's show. Before we get into this week's show, last week's show was really awesome. We actually got so into it, we kind of ran out of time a little bit. Absolutely. Um, but it was all about concealed carry. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking about uh, getting your concealed carry license, you know, how you go about getting it, who should have one, where you apply, things like Everyone that. Everyone should have one. As long as you can get a firearm, you should have a concealed weapons license. Yeah, period. and we do talk about the benefit of Absolutely. why you should have it, even if you don't want to carry, Absolutely. what's the benefit of actually having it. Again, just as a quick rehash, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So it gives you a lot more options. It doesn't mean that you have to do it, but just having it is exponentially can help you in the long run. So go out and get it. Yes, I agree. And that was episode eight that we're talking about, which was last week. Mm -hmm. um, and that is very informative. So please rewatch, share, um, and subscribe to our channel. Definitely start sharing link, it. Link. Link. No, not link. No, like. Bell. Share. There's all sorts subscribe. of shit you do, So just do it all. The bell is the reminder. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah, so you can set a reminder, FYI, because if you're as busy, you know, like we are, you can, oh, there you go. See, Rob has it up subscribe, on the screen. So the on the top up, right, subscribe. you'll see the little subscribe button. So clearly Rob is subscribed to us, which is awesome. But the little bell there. Um, He's our second subscriber. <laughs> yeah, our whole two <laughs> subscribe. Actually, it would be three because we both subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and Thanks, Rob. Rob. So that makes Appreciate three. It, yeah, we're super excited about that, having three. So anyway, so the reminder is good because um, it'll like literally send you it'll, like a little it'll text. It'll remind you? It gives you a reminder. Wow. Mm -hmm. Who knew? It's awesome. Okay. okay, let's get into today's topic. All right, so of course I ran some stats on... Um, accidental shootings and things like that. Um, and, and when I say accidental shootings, and, and it's funny because when I research stats, it drives me crazy because what they consider, you know, mass shootings and, you know, the media just, just blows things up. So if a husband, like, kills his wife, God forbid, kills his wife, kills himself, that's considered, like, mass, a mass shooting, yeah. you know? So um, there was also a guy that shot a coworker and or two coworkers, and that, of course, was a mass shooting. So... Again, we're going to go over different things uh, when I was looking up these stats. Um, these are really about just accidental, preventable accidents that happen with firearms. And that's really what we want to concentrate on today right. because it's really important. Nobody, uh, I would hope nobody means to accidentally shoot themselves um, or a loved one um, be just because of their uh, inability to follow the basic firearm safety rules. Right. right? So, right. Um, and some of the examples we give tonight are going to kind of talk about that as well. They're all preventable, the ones that we, we're going to talk about. So, and what are the safety rules, right? I mean, that's, that's one of those things. Yes. So. And we are going to talk about that. And I actually yeah. think I have them over by you. But first and foremost, um, I wanted to talk about how accidental shootings exasperate gun control advocates. So it kind of, you right. know, really upsets people that are firearm enthusiasts um, and firearm experts because we see them as preventable just right. by following those Absolutely. safety rules, right? Because right. a lot of even the examples we give tonight, you know, that, that one rule, which is keep your finger off the trigger until you've made the decision to shoot, yep. um, is likely a lot of these uh, examples that we give, that's, that's one of the things that right. could be preventable. So um, according to the Center of Disease Control, accidental discharge or unintentional gunfire. Um, so the, the the records that they have is up to 2017, which is like, come on now, it's 2022. Like, how can I not find stats on 2020 to 2022? It takes a little bit to count all those. So the last 18 years, from 1999 to 2017, people um, that were killed by unintentional gunfire dropped 41%, which is great. That's good. And the reason they were saying uh, that it dropped is, is different rules that they put in place, which, again, gun advocates get upset about, put any kind of rules that are put in place. Right. But if it helps deter people from hurting themselves or keeping firearms out of people's hands that shouldn't have them, sure. you know, it's a good idea. I'm just saying, right. you know, I mean, of course, people don't like restrictions, but, um, you know, and we don't like restrictions. 
but Agreed. certain ones. But if it helps saves lives, then we got to do what we got to do. Correct. So right, give exactly. A little, give a little every once in a while. Right. So it dropped forty one percent, which is which is great, and and the decline decline began in nineteen eighties. But Florida, come on, Florida, let's do this. Had an eighty two percent increase <laughs> um, as of twenty seventeen. We're the state. We are, and it's definitely because of the amount of fi people that have firearms in Florida. Um, we talked about that uh, last week or the week before, yeah, week. how yeah. many people have guns in the state of Florida and how many yeah. people have concealed license. Two and a half, yeah. how many? 2.65 <laughs> million. <laughs> Correct. So uh, that's okay. too many. That's too many Floridians um, killed by unintentional gunfire. 413. Absolutely. That's too many. Yeah. Okay, so let's try to uh, reduce that and let's try to... Um, follow the, the information we give you today, and right. you shouldn't have an accident, right? Absolutely. We can teach it over and over, um, but we can't control people when they leave our classes because right. we really do drive it home in our classes. Yeah, and I mean, it's something you have to practice all the time. It's not something you go, ah, today I'm going to do this, and today I'm going to do that. So right. there's three rules, technically really four rules yes. um, for safe gun handling. Mm -hmm. um, always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. So what does that mean? It can vary based on what's going on right around you. So yes. um, always keep your finger off the trigger until you've determined to shoot. Thank you for putting those up there. No. Um, always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use it, and then know what's between you and your target and beyond. So those are going to be your four rules for safe gun handling. Correct. And there's another one. We jumped ahead just a little bit, but um, thank you, Rob, for putting that up on the screen. Yeah. Um, so. Can you put those back up just for a second? So uh, when we talk about gun safety, all right, so we had talked about in a previous show, right, mm -hmm. to keep to treat all guns as if they're not they're loaded. loaded. Um, so we went over how to clear a firearm. So you're always going to want to know how to make sure that your gun is clear. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust right. your mother, your brother, your sister. I don't care who it is, the gun shop salesperson that hands you a gun. You should be checking that gun because right. ultimately it's your responsibility when you handle a gun to check and make you're, sure you're it's clear. You're staying your light on, life on it. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Or somebody else. That's right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, the second rule, of course, um, never let the muzzle point at anything you're not willing to destroy. Well, hello, right? In Keep these. Point in a safe direction. Right. So simple, yeah. right? Yep. I mean, don't point the front of the gun, the barrel, where the bullet comes out of at anything you're not willing to destroy, right? Absolutely. I mean, literally, so simple. So if you point it at your foot. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to go well. If you point it at somebody else. Do we have a video of that? We may have a video. Do you want to do that now? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're talking. Shad's very it. excited about this video. So, okay. We're just a quick diagnostic. All right. So we're at the firing range. Hey, look. He's taking it's a not selfie. Necessarily really the safe direction because it's still not pointed down range. But what do you think? Is this a safe <gasps> direction? Uh, right. So it's... the question is: Is what in the actual fuck was he thinking? I mean, seriously. Yeah, it's really bad. He's like. Who know, they might be related. I don't know. But you somehow there's something, right? And you point it's the gun shocking. at his head. And when you think about it, so again, it's ignorance, right? It's oh. ignorance. So did that guy actually want to shoot his friend, whoever that was, no, right? No, he didn't. But it of was just like, well, let me get a picture of me pointing my gun at my cousin, brother, sister, friend, whatever's head. Insane. Absolutely horrible. And that is exactly what happens in these instances that we're going to talk about and why there are so many Floridians, right. too many Floridians, being killed uh, act by accidental discharges. Right. And um, yeah, that's, it's too much. And it's people like that that are doing that. Because again, what I see, especially in our classes, and I'm sure you can agree, when I'm teaching yeah. beginners, we go over it and over and over these rules, like really drive it home, really, really yep. like drive it home and even give examples like, I know that when you get to the range, you know, it's, it's going to get loud. Somebody right. is going to be shooting next to you. You're, it's going to startle you if you're not jumping a little bit of the first shots that go off at the range of the person next to you then you're not human right, <laughs> right. I mean even honestly last night at shooting club I jumped a couple of times just because you know somebody was real close and they were shooting yeah. so remember have hearing protection on when they shoot anyway that's another one okay anyway so um <laughs> you threw me off um <laughs> 
So in that instance, you know, you got to remember that things are going to happen. So here's this guy yes. at the range, right, in that video that is, like, super excited. He probably got a new gun, right? He spent $700 on it. He's so proud of it. You know, right. he's with his buddy, super excited to shoot. He took a class. And here he is taking a selfie, you know. First of all, his finger not was on the trigger. Not pointing it in a safe direction. Not pointing it in a safe direction. And then proceeds to point it at his... Even a worse direction. <laughs> like, right at his head. <laughs> it was so bad. I mean, right at his temple. Oh, I mean, really, really God. bad. And it's like the safety rules just go out of the brain and yeah. you just do things like that so ultimately it's very 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 important there's been times where I've driven these safety rules home in our class and we go to the range and somebody does something unsafe and yep. we're like we just went over this so it is all about repetition absolutely all Pass about memory, repetition right? just mm -hmm. got to do it and do it and do it do it and do it and do so it and practice just second nature even at home yep. just practice 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 every time you handle a gun just practice make sure you're you're following all of those safety rules okay absolutely um i also wanted to talk a little bit about um snap caps or um blanks no they're not blanks not they're, they're yeah. snap caps they're dummy just plastic ammunition. dummy ammunition that right. you can um, play around with that's going to keep you safe uh, and and allow you to be able to kind of manipulate the firearm and yep. load it and chamber it and things like that but we'll get into that in a minute sure. um so training doesn't protect you from lack of common sense nope i mean that's the bottom line you yep. have to use common sense these are deadly weapons deadly right kill you don't don't fear them respect them absolutely right? we just want to respect sure so we know what they can do so respect what it is again fear yeah, some parents will say oh you want to fear the you don't want to fear it just respect what it can do so where whatever you're doing with it know what it can do correct and just never point it at somebody's head <laughs> it really is unbelievable <laughs> yeah. yeah that was a really good video find I say <laughs> Yeah, really nailed it. Yeah. Okay, so I have a couple of examples of um, of these bad things, including the video, which we yeah. threw in at the last minute, which is awesome. So this lady, example one, Lillian Miser, she knocked her purse off the checkout counter at Publix, oh, and boy. her 38 Dellin, 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 Derringer, thank you very much, big word, um, loose in her purse, never a good idea, discharged, shooting her husband in the leg. So there's so many things that are wrong with this situation, okay? Number one, your firearm should be secured if you have it in some sort of bag or purse Absolutely. or a computer bag or whatever it is. So I carry a, a gun in right. my backpack. Yep. It is in a holster. It is in a zippered um, sleeve case, um, yep. part of the, the backpack, backpack that actually keeps it upright. And it is in a holster, right, right covering the trigger guard. Well, you, you need to know where it's at. Sure. Because right? otherwise you're going to, give me a second. Let me go ahead and find my gun real quick. And you're rifling around through your purse like you're trying to find your keys. Correct. It certainly should not be loose yeah. in your purse. Right. The second bad thing is that it's, it's a Derringer. So if you're not familiar with what a Derringer is, a Derringer does not have, thank you, it does not have a trigger guard. Or if it does, it could come off. Correct? So, some have them on and they can be removed. It's but on your screen. For instance, mm -hmm. yeah, put that back up there just for a second. Yep, it's on your screen. So mm -hmm. The particular firearm is a single action only gun, meaning there's a hammer on it. It's hard to see because of the color of the, the gun. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you have to pull the hammer back in order for it to shoot. Correct. So you can't just pull the trigger. Right. So that tells us that the gun was in her purse. With, with the hammer, hammer back, cocked back. Not in a holster. Not in a holster and loose in her bag. So I don't know. There's like nine wow. things wrong with that. So, wow. so bad. And I can only guesstimate that the husband had to cock the hammer back. Because I hear that a lot. Because the, the strength, the dexterity strength sometimes of people, you know, as they get older, they can't cock that hammer back on the, you know, the revolvers. So they have somebody cock it back for them and then it's right. ready to fire. Ready but to use. even in our free reassures, shows, we've gone over that. When you cock a hammer back, it's going to really lighten that trigger pull, right. which is absolutely what happened and, there. And in this particular instance, the single action only gun, you can't shoot it without pulling the hammer back. Correct. So in it's that not instance, a double if you have a gun like that and you pull it out and point it at somebody that you are trying to stop a threat with, that's the time to point it at somebody. <laughs> right. And that threat doesn't stop. You pull the hammer back and you shoot them. I mean, that's, but it's a safety mechanism so that you don't, I don't know, accidentally shoot your, husband shoot your husband <laughs> in the leg. It's really bad. You don't want to do that. Um, so very preventable accident there. Uh, example number two, uh, Jessica Perry, 21, was riding in the back seat when she accidentally fired a gun. Police reported at the time the rounds hit a 17-year-old, uh, her friend in the back, uh, killing her. Oh. So you're riding in the back of a, a car. Wow. 
And A, why are you handling a firearm and playing around with a gun in, in the back seat of a car and right. pointing it in an unsafe direction, meaning at the other person in the car, and the and, firearm goes off and you right. kill your friend. Now, ultimately, she may or may not have been pointing it at her, but she was pointing it at the seat, of which her friend is in the seat. Which is kind of at her. I'm just saying. But the thought process was like, oh, it's just a bullet. It won't go through the seat. It'll go through a seat. <laughs> yes. Ooh. I don't mean to laugh because this is horrible, um, but we're just but again, enter we're entertaining. Is, is right. yeah. it's, it's the whole thought process. Correct. So they will go through a seat. They will go through a wall. <gasps> yes. Now, a concrete block wall, different. Right. right? But depending, the seat depending is not depending concrete. On the fire. Right. It's not concrete block. Right. It's a freaking seat. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's foam. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Example number three. Oh, wow. Is that the same one? I think I did the same one. Okay. Um, Another an, example. An armed man, so somebody that was carrying, 43 years old, mm -hmm. was moving a gun from his waistband to his pocket as he got out of his truck when he tripped on some construction debris. And the Hillsborough uh, sheriff said that the handgun discharged and a round struck and killed a man working on a roof. Wow. <laughs> wow. So what you could have, have aimed and done that? What could have possibly went wrong with that situation? Um, so I think finger off the trigger would be the main one that I see um, sure. right there, right? So of course, if you're tripping and you trip, it's an you know it's an accident. Right. And honestly, accidents do happen. Right. However, finger off the trigger. So while you can walk, talk, chew gum, and pat and do your head and all that shit at the same time, <laughs> don't walk and try to pull your gun out and put it into your pocket. When you're at a construction site? I don't know. That's, I mean, that's pretty I mean, good advice. get out of your car, pull it out, put it into your pocket, and now start moving. Yes. Why are you trying to do it all at once? Yes, I agree. Pri prime example on, and again, finger off the trigger. Yes. You can move the gun from one place to another without putting your finger on the trigger. Correct. 100%. Yeah, and even when I teach in my concealed class, when people are pulling, uh, pulling their guns out of their holster, I mean, that's really when it becomes very important. So the gun is clear. Um, right. So when you're drawing from your holster, imagine having your finger here. Right. As you're drawing out of your holster and not having that finger discipline, which is so important, um, and potentially when you're drawing in a self-defense right. situation, you're, you're, you know, thrown off, your yeah. adrenaline is going, you're not, you know, again, not, maybe not thinking clear, that's when this, you know, has to be practice, 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 that you understand when you're drawing right. that your finger shouldn't be there until you're actually ready to fire, right? Well, no, until we made the decision, right? And this is what we talked about. And for a long time, we did say until you're ready to fire, because that's what a lot of the mm -hmm. USCCA, NRA, NRA mm -hmm. you know, kind of state. Mm -hmm. But it's actually when you've made the decision to fire, because ultimately okay. you can mm -hmm. still... Again, if, if we have a, an issue where we're using it in defensive purposes and somebody is coming at us, if I point the gun at them, I don't have to have my finger on the trigger at that point because if they go, oh, I'm done, I'm out. Well, you're done. At that point, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're done. Anyway, so if they go, I'm done, there's no reason to have your finger on the trigger because ultimately you could have... A, a twitch, something mm -hmm. if your finger's on the trigger, and all of a sudden it goes off. Well, they just gave up, and the threat is now done. Correct. So We, we kind of touched on this a little bit last week, but thank you for bringing it up again. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very, very important to know that, that you sometimes drawing is enough. Yep. Right. Sometimes drawing is enough. Criminals are looking for easy targets. So right. as soon as you draw your firearm at, at the criminal, um, you don't necessarily have to have your finger on the trigger at that point. Like Shad is saying, you haven't made the decision to shoot yet because the criminal may be like, whoa, you know, and run away. And in that instance, don't shoot, right? right? Because the shit storm of stuff that happens when you fire your weapon right. um, really just comes down. Firearm. We weapon. For firearm. Weapons weapon. Weapon. offensive purposes. Whatever. We're defensive. Anyway, yeah. so, uh, so yeah, truly uh, do you have to have that finger dis trigger control and yeah. discipline yeah. Uh, really, really important. Um, and to every instance is different. I mean, you kind of sure. know the situation. If you have enough time to get the firearm out and present it, uh -huh. um, and that threat is still coming at you, then you have to do what you have to do. If you don't have that much time to do that, then mm -hmm. you have to do what you have to do. Sure. So. And there's definitely people, I know law, some law enforcement people that we know, you know, uh, give us hard times on different things, you know, yeah. like, oh, why wouldn't you have your finger on the trigger? Oh, you know, like, but ultimately, you know, their, their training is a little bit different. Law enforcement's training is different. Absolutely. You know, their, their role They're is offensive. very different than civilians. Right. So you have right. to really uh, do what's right for you and just always remember that Bobby if you Q. do 
shoot your firearm and take somebody's life or injure them, there is a, an absolute shitstorm of things that are going to happen, okay? Right. So ultimately, if you don't have to shoot, don't. Uh, very important. Yep. All right, so those examples that we gave you, absolutely preventable uh, just by following the firearm safety rules that we went right. over. Um, very, very important stuff. Don't forget about them. They have to have right. to be play in your mind every single day, every single time you, you handle a firearm yeah. or especially carrying. I mean, even when you go in to clean it, right? This is when a lot of, a lot accidents, of accidents happen. happen. When mm -hmm. you go in to clean the gun because some mm -hmm. firearms require you to pull the trigger in order to take them apart. Um, so you, you always keep it pointed in a safe direction, right? Again, sometimes you have to pull the trigger in order to take it apart, so that, that sure. kind of Very important, yeah. A lot of them, actually. Right. A lot of guns do require you to pull the trigger yeah. to dis, dis, um, disassemble them. Yeah, so you can't check it enough to make sure that it's empty um, and always just keep it pointed in a safe direction when you go to take it apart. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, accidental gun discharge also can result in criminal charges. Um, so even though you didn't mean to do it, <laughs> is what? that shocking to you? <laughs> um, so it is shocking, but it's true. Uh, so as long as there's, there's um, evidence, they can, if a prosecutor concludes that there's evidence uh, that the individual was criminal, criminally negligent, then there will be charges brought right. against you. Um, so like, you know, the, I guess the, the girl that was pointing it at her friend, potentially, and I say girl, I think I said her name. I think it was a girl. Jessica, yeah. I think that's a girl, but who knows nowadays. Okay, moving on before we get into that. Um, before we go down that <laughs> Before I give hole. him the, you know, the go-ahead to talk about that. Um, but, yeah, that is p potentially criminally negligent. I mean, why are you pointing it at the seat? Yeah. Where there's somebody sitting, sitting in it. <laughs> um, the, the woman that shot her husband, they said she wasn't negligent because she did drop her purse. She wasn't Maybe actually handling it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what aim her purse had because it's it was on the floor right? and it hit him, you know, it hit well him in the leg. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It really is unbelievable. Okay. So don't do that stuff, guys. It's um, Please. very important. Yeah. Okay. All right. So moving on, um, I'm just going to. Thank the people that are just joining us right now. Welcome to Tactical Talk uh, with Mad Dog Armory. I'm Jillian and this is Shad and we appreciate you joining us. We're here every Friday at 6 p.m. You can watch us on YouTube, on WeBeam TV, Facebook, all the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Like, share, subscribe, remind. What <laughs> Bing. <laughs> Bong. Fuck your life. What do you, what? <laughs> well, I don't know why you're saying that. Okay. All right. Anyway, thank you for joining us. We're going to continue on with the show. Today we're talking about um, accidental discharges, uh, firearm safety, how to prevent them, um, and how most uh, firearm accidents are preventable if you just follow very simple uh, firearm safety rules. Yeah. So we are covering that. Um, we're going to talk a little about, bit about firearm storage. So like okay. I had mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. in the state of Florida, their rules are, are pretty simple. Um, you must secure your firearm and safely store it. Yep. Um, it is in the statute 790, um, and basically the legislature says that there's a tragically large number of children that are accidentally killed or seriously injured, and I'm actually, don't even have to read it, I've said it so many times, <laughs> teaching so many classes. Yeah. Um, but it is true, there is a tragically large number of children that are accidentally killed um, yeah. by, and when we say children, it's minors. And I believe Florida uh, is 17, right? Is it 16, 16 or 17? I, I don't know. Okay, so, um, but you, you absolutely want to keep your firearms away from anybody that is a minor, anybody yeah. that is untrained, or anybody that um, is a felon or shouldn't have their hands on your gun. Correct. Okay, so it's not just minors, but of right. course we want to concentrate on minors as well because, um, you know, children kind of don't think clearly a lot. Their brains aren't fully developed and they see a gun, especially with video games nowadays. Smart brain fully developed? Well, you're you a know. different story, yeah. but yeah. Um, but yeah, so... <laughs> Threw it for a loop again. You do. Know. You throw those things and then I forget what I'm saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> so children, so like I said, their brains aren't fully developed, especially with video games was my point. So how about our son, uh, Kobe? He, when he was younger, he played a lot of video games mm -hmm. and funny when we opened the gun shop mm -hmm. he would come in and look at all the rifles on the wall and he would be like oh that's a blah 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 that's a this that's a that and he knew the names of these guns and he knew what they were yeah. just by the video games yeah. so video games are actually some of them I guess 
I don't play, but you do, are accurate with the kinds of guns that you're Absolutely. using and picking and actually the player is using. And we never want kids to get confused between right. playing a game and then a real live firearm because that's right. going to absolutely cause an accident. Again, it's respecting it. right? Mm -hmm. So we introduced him to firearms at a, at a younger age mm -hmm. um, just because of, of what we do and my yes. upbringing, kind of the same situation, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but we introduced him at a young age and the first time he went out to shoot, he didn't like loud noises. So right. we went out to shoot and he shot it and I think it was a 9mm that we had him on, 9mm. Mm -hmm. And it went off, and he just put the thing down. He's like, nope. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> yep, he wasn't so, ready. <laughs> and he didn't want to shoot again until nope. he was about 13 or 14 Teenager. years old. Yeah. Yes. So it, it took quite some time. He didn't like it. He respected it, though, right? Yes. Because he knew what it could do at that point, and he, he didn't like it at all. Um, so it, it was a, a very interesting experience. Yeah, and, sure. and I'm very happy that we did that with him because, yeah. and, and again, when people are asking us mm -hmm. if uh, they're, they, what's the age that they can bring in their kids for training, you know, and I say that's really ultimately up, up to, to you. you. Um, I don't like training kids like under 13. I want to do 13 and over because there's a general rule at that age. They're usually semi, <laughs> their brains are semi-functioning mm -hmm. and I can keep their attention and really hone in on the safety rules because think about it, adults don't follow the safety rules. Look at all these accidents that happen happen, right? So imagine kids, you know, also not being able to actually fathom sure. the, re the actual the repercussions of, of what's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. So I personally prefer 13 and older, but I always tell the parent, you know, hey, you know your kid better than I do. Absolutely. You know, what's their maturity level? Are they able to retain things? Yeah. And um, for us, we want to meet. Do they follow really direction? Meet, and you kind of you get an idea and kind of get a feel, you mm -hmm. know, when they come into the shop. You know, whether or not, if they're goofing off a lot, it's like, nope, that's not going to yeah, happen. Absolutely. Um, but most of the time they come in and it's like, oh, wow, it's a gun shop, you know, so yeah. it's... Absolutely. Yeah. And again, they, they think they know the guns because they're mm -hmm. playing video games that have those guns in it. And they know, they right. think they know just by their little clickers, you know, that, oh, I can do this. <laughs> is it a clicker? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't play games. <laughs> What's the thing? We'll call it a clicker. A joystick? What? That's something else. <laughs> All right. What is it called? A gaming controller? controller a controller or a clicker or a stick i like the clicker <laughs> I, I, I don't know where's the clicker oh my gosh well can you tell that i don't play video <laughs> games i'm sorry the clicker that's the remote <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's boy. my clicker oh wow that's your dad is here hi dad oh, geez <laughs> Yeah, Hi, we, do, we do have a special guest <laughs> coming on we're very excited about that we have a special guest yeah um the colonel the colonel not Sanders. Not, yeah, not Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel. No. The real Colonel. The real deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, securing your firearm, very, very important. Yes. Um, again, against felon, uh, we'll talk minors, but, uh, you know, if you have a roommate that's a felon and isn't allowed to... Yeah, huge. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can't Boyfriend, have their hands on it. Whoever, whoever it might be. And again, Husband, there's no, wife. nothing against that situation, sure. right? Because God knows what happened. Things happen. You know? Um, but felons cannot be in possession or have access to access. a firearm. So it uh, can't be in possession of or have access to. Correct. So we've dealt with that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be securely encased in something, and they cannot have access to whatever that item is. Safely stored, yes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Absolutely, yes. Um, and that happens a lot, like a husband and wife, like Shad was saying, or mm -hmm. a roommate or something like that. The, yeah. other, the other part, again, is the... Um, I say I'm saying again to a lot. Am I repeating myself? No. Right. Right? <laughs> We're supposed to do the counter for the right. Now I got to do it for again. Again. Um, we'll put up a counter for that. But, um, and then you have to drink, right? Oh, we were yeah. going to do that, and then we never did it. Yeah. Where's John? He was supposed to help I us know. with that. The counter. Where the hell, John? Yeah. All right. So anyway, um, so felons and then people that are untrained, right? Yeah. So I tell all of this in my, my classes, too. You know, you don't want people that aren't trained. So say your spouse is not trained or your, you know, grown child or whoever's living with you right. that has access to your firearm to defend the, the house. Yeah. They need to be trained on it because if they're not, they're going to potentially gonna go well not follow the firearm safety yeah. rules. They could potentially shoot themselves, shoot somebody else, not know how to use it, then the criminal uses it on right. them. So yeah. again... Not well. It won't go well. No. Right. Anybody that has access to your firearm in your home or in your vehicle, wherever you have it, yep. that somebody has access to it should be trained. Absolutely. Um, so, or don't give them access. Yeah. All right. So back to minors. So there's a bunch of ways that you can safely secure your firearm. I mean, so many different... Absolutely. ...ways. So all new mm -hmm. firearms come with gun locks. It's required. Looks like this. Holy shnikes. Yep. Can you believe I brought that? Are you impressed? 
I am. I know. You didn't think I was bringing it. But I did. I brought it. So every single firearm, used or new, yep. is to Required. come with one of these. Yep. And I know it's Florida. I'm not sure if it's national. But I do it know is. it is Florida for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so this is a... Um, it's an ATF thing. Is it an ATF thing? It is. Okay. Yep. See, that's why I bring you along. Yep. So this thing here, so again, we're going to use this gun as an example. Again, the magazine is out and the chamber is clear, so this gun is clear. And what they want you to do is put this through here. I can get it through. Not necessarily through the barrel. A lot of people want to put it through the barrel. Correct. So Could some people you, yes, put it through but here. It's not necessarily. Right. Yeah. So, and then you're going to lock it, right? Um, the issue I have with this. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially for home defense, is you have to find the balance between having it safely stored and having it accessible, right? right? So if this is through it, and we hear a lot of people say, I use it, you know, and I show people how to right. use it, um, uh, is, you know, let's just say you have a home invasion at two in the morning. Right. And here you have this through your gun, and this key is in your third drawer at the bottom underneath your socks, right? And it's two in the morning, and you're sleeping, and you get woken up by broken glass. Well, there you go, running... You, you You're go disoriented. Over to the second drawer, the underwear drawer. Right. Can't can't find right. the key. Look how tiny little baby this key is. I mean, it's a yeah. little baby key. Yeah. Then you got to find the gun. Then you got to find the hole, and you're trying to unlock mm -hmm. it. That's really hard. Right. And it just takes a really really yeah. long time. So ultimately, if you can use this, it's great. But you need to practice it. You mm -hmm. need to have a flashlight handy, right, with it. You need to know exactly and and literally do it all the time, like multiple times to just like run over there, know what drawer it's in, know where this, is, you know, all that. Practice it, and maybe you can be really right. fast with it, There's and it'll work great. Other options, though. So definitely many other, other options, options out there. Yeah. For, for that purpose. Now, again, mm -hmm. we can have different. If you have more firearms, you have multiple firearms, well, then you can secure most of them with that. And sure. then whatever you're using for your self-defense purposes, which would be in this particular instance, whether it's your bedside gun or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. that you might want to have secured a different way that's a little bit more readily accessible, but mm -hmm. still secure. Correct. So magnets are one of our favorite things to use personally. Yeah. Uh, and we like to tell you about them. We carry them in our stores. You can also mm. see them up on our website. Um, they are readily available to the public and yeah. um, very affordable products. They're great for um, having your firearm uh, stored safely. Now, with that said, you're going to want to clear your firearm, right? So what Shad and I did is we, as our kids got a little bit older, they were introduced to firearms. They respected it. We, they weren't toddlers, okay? So this wouldn't be for people that have small children, of course. But if your children are older, and again, this is totally what we did personal and preference. personal preference yep. is uh, we had a gun that was clear, right? No magazine, nothing in the chamber and boom, magnet to our, you know, behind our bed or, um, you know, the side of our nightstand or, mm. you know, wherever we wanted to put it. Then this, the magazine loaded, would be in a different spot, okay? Or vice versa. You could put this on the magnet and this empty gun, which cannot go off ever, um, would be somewhere else. It's, it's literally it's a paperweight. It's, you can, yeah. It cannot go off. It's the magazine with the ammunition um, that's going to make it live, okay. right? So ultimately, we kept these in two different situations, in two different spaces. So mm -hmm. whether you know it's in your closet, it's under your mattress, whatever. But so it's accessible. So you have to safely store it and have it accessible to you. Right. So that's the balance that you have to find. And ultimately, everybody's home situation is different, right? You could yep. live alone. You may have small children. So ultimately, you have to find what's right for you. But there are so many options yep. out there. Safe. Um, right. Safe. Safe. Yep. Yeah. If yeah. you want to have your gun like locked and loaded chambered, ready to go, that you just grab it and yeah. use it, you better have that secured. Right. And they so don't only have to be big access. safes, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be something huge. Correct, yeah. So it can be something smaller. Right. There's all sorts of different options for yep. sure. So even on your screen, um, the Hornady yeah. Rapid Safe that's um, in the middle of your screen Rapide. there is a great, great... <laughs> what? what? Rapid? Rapid. Oh, God. Okay. So the Rapid Safe is really awesome. Yes. Um, it has the RFID radio... What is it? Radio frequency identification. Right. And coming here, what's I'm like, what's for? the D stand for? So um, it's clearly ID. Okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the RFID is cool. So how you yeah. can open it is it not only has like a keypad mm -hmm. to open it, but it also has a, a bracelet that has an RFID chip yep. in so it. So it'd be kind of like this, but it mm -hmm. just has a chip in it. Correct. So you can just run your wrist across it. 
Correct. That would work. Yep, it's almost like biometric almost, right? Or is biometric fingerprint? Biometric fingerprint. Okay, yep. so just kidding. So, so it's RFID. Yep, so you could do that. You can also just have a key fob. So you can have it on your keys and just run your key fob across. And mm -hmm. they also have um, Card. cards, yep. like a, like credit, a card. credit card style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. so the RFIDs are really great uh, for yeah. Uh, many different options for you to have quick access. So but one not of inexpensive technology, right? So correct. you can look on the screen. It's not an inexpensive item, but it is very effective. But very so worth it for our friends. You can't you can't put your price on this stuff. <laughs> you really can't. Right. You know. Um, but I get it. If you're on a if you're on a real budget, there's there's ways around it. But correct. You know, if you can make it fit, make it fit. It's well worth the investment. And that investment would have been great uh, for our friends that just told us a story recently that they had an incident. They have children, yeah. um, twins actually. They're adorable. And they had an incident where they had a scare that it was a, a break in entering, breaking and entering. Yeah. Um, and they. Uh, went to their gun and it was secured in a case with a keypad and they couldn't remember the code. Right. They couldn't access their gun. High stressful situation, they couldn't remember the code. And yeah. So something like that, the RFID yeah. is great because it has a backup, right? right? So you can grab the credit card thing right. that you have Keep or the wrist thing. So there's multiple different ways to get into the gun. Um, and I know that a keypad usually has a key backup. Yep. But again, in a low light or high stress situation, it's like, where did we put that key? Right. I mean, look at our junk drawer, right? Like, I talk about keys. Our junk drawer? Junk drawer. Oh, junk drawer has so many keys in it, you know, yes. where would you find? We have a lot of keys and just, you know, where... We, we still have no idea what some keys go to. Well, I think that's common for people. <laughs> I hope that's common for people because it's true. If well, not, hey, we connected. <laughs> so it's always good to have a backup, you know, um, the fingerprint safes, the biometrics yeah. are great. You can do up to like 99 fingerprints. Right. So you can and do your thumb, go, oh, your oh, finger. I only need to do one finger. Well. Not necessarily. Not so necessarily. If, if something happens, like try to get into those things with your fingers wet. Mm -hmm. Which sure. they could just be wet. Or it could from be in the shower when something whatever. happens. Yeah, so, true. Blood. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you want to do multiple fingers, multiple hands, yes. so that if something happens, because ultimately your fingerprint can change, especially if you do something to it where you have a, a scar or something like that. Yeah, um, people burn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I've heard people even doing like class three stuff mm -hmm. um, or even applying for their concealed, they have trouble with their fingerprints yeah. sometimes. So, you know, as, it's as not... As we get older, our fingerprints do... Like change a Go away. Bit. I mean, they, they start to fade. I mean, it does make it much harder to, to fingerprint uh, as we start getting older. I don't want my fingerprints to fade or go away. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Like sands through an hourglass. <laughs> um, so you want to be really careful that you have access to your gun if you're going to yeah. have it in some sort of locked box or safe or something like that, that it has some sort of backup. Um, yes. Sometimes they'll have a battery backup. Sometimes right. they'll have a plug that goes into your electrical socket. Um, right. So either way, you have to have that backup. Um, right. Yep. So very, very important. Um, so cool. Anything to add on that? <laughs> Because this is where I was going to go into the firearm safety rules, but we oh already boy. did that, yep. so that's okay. okay. All right, cool. So find what's right for you. Lots of different options. Um, like I said, the magnets were our choice. Um, oh, there's also that. I wanted to show them that, that sleeve. So this is pretty cool. Um, so an under-the-desk holster. So if you have a business or you sit at a desk and you're um, able Let's to put something like that. Um, this is really cool because you can screw it in, nail it in, however you secure so it. I think it goes the other way. Come on, Vanna. <laughs> so it goes in a sleeve. It goes in a, she's pointing it at me, though. So it goes in a sleeve, <laughs> and we know it's clear, so uh, yeah. Um, but it goes in a sleeve like this, yep. and basically we have these like in our and office and stuff like that. Store Put it, it like underneath, that, yes. So Very cool. So now I'm pointing at me, but hey. Yes. So go. under, it's called an under the desk holster. So in addition to the magnet, so some people don't like the magnet because it doesn't feel like it's very secure, even though the magnet holds like 30 pounds or something like that. Yes. And if your They're gun is 30 impressive. pounds, it can hold like a shotgun. Yeah. So um, a lot of people, actually we have too, put it mm -hmm. up in, in, our, in your closet, in closet. Um, and it'll like hold that gun to to the magnet. Yep. But you also have something like this that has a sleeve that you can actually slip through the firearm. And then this way you can feel it's a little bit more secure. Um, and it holds it yep. a little tighter. So those are, are pretty good. But again, that is not something that you're going to want to have around people like children and things like that right. that might gain access because that is not secured. It is just secured so you can get to it, but it readily should be... Readily accessible. Not secured, but readily accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've got to be careful with that. Yeah. 
Um, all right, cool. So s another thing I wanted to talk about, because uh, I did mention like when your magazine is out and your chamber is clear on your gun, you know, again, this gun is a paperweight. Yep. Um, we talked about snap caps, all right? So these plastic guys here. Uh, snap caps are great for training purposes. They are not live rounds. Um, a lot of times people say, well, I don't know how to load and chamber my round and things like that, but they are uh, amazing for training. Yeah. Um, you never want to be an experience with your firearm where you have a full magazine and you put it in your gun and you're pulling the trigger because bang. what's going to happen? Yeah, bang. Nothing. <laughs> oh, and these, nothing. Yeah, Correct. But no, no, no. Yeah. If you load your magazine yep. and you put it caps. in your gun, yep. no, with real ammunition. Oh, gotcha. Real ammunition goes in here, you pop this in, and you pull the trigger, what Nothing happens? happens. It's not Nothing loaded. happens. It not is loaded. not chambered. It will not go off. So if you don't understand your gun that you put a full magazine in and you have to chamber that round, that's a problem. And some people, again, have trouble pulling the slide back. So this is going to really help out with practicing. Practicing. Very, very good practicing tool. Because uh, if you do that with live ammunition, what can happen? An accident. Correct. Yes. Unless you did it on purpose, and then it's not on purpose. Yes. That is true, very true. So, um, so snap caps are very, very good uh, to have in addition to different things that you might have for practicing. They are up on your screen. They come in all different calibers. They come in shotgun, they come in uh, rifle, so there's no rifle, reason. Rifle, pistol, yeah, mm -hmm. calibers, all sorts of stuff. Correct, so lots of different um, yeah. sizes. It'll go in your gun. If um, We carry them all in the store. They're very popular. We sell them yep. a lot with uh, beginner people that are, are buying their first gun so they yeah. can get familiar with it. Very, very, very uh, affordable training option to, mm -hmm. to keep you safe and not have accidental discharges. Yeah. Super important. Yeah. So there's no powder in them. There's no projectile that's going to come out. So you can load, chamber, pull the trigger. Not, it's not going to make a sound. It's not going to shoot anything out. It is literally just plastic. Yep. So And it also helps with dry firing. Yes. So Absolutely. people it that gets, dry so fire... So the firing pen, for <laughs> right. sure. We've had people come in and they're like, my gun's not working. Yeah. <laughs> it, it damages the firing pen because they've just been sitting there going, ha, 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 ha. If you yeah. keep, I mean, if they make that sound. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't make that sound because that is really bad. But. You know, the most <laughs> annoying sound ever. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That is absolutely <laughs> true. All right. So, uh, so snap caps, really, really great. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to show you that is also a very good investment Ooh, for you to make. Your thumbs love you. Up with this. Lula. Okay. Yeah. So it's a mag Lula up Lula. What the heck is sure. it? Called? <laughs> so it's, it's a loader. Awful. I call it a cheater, right? Um, because what this does is it helps you load your magazine with your ammunition. Mm -hmm. um, and I will tell you right now, the hardest gun that I have loading that I own, that we own, is a 365, which okay. is a very, very popular firearm nowadays. Um, and let me tell you something, guys. I load magazines all day long, and I cannot for the life of me, get that last round in without this. So you are going to want to get one of these guys. It is a loader. It's called Mag Lula. Lula. Um, I had the paper somewhere, but I don't yeah. know where it is. Um, and it is amazing. So it's like 30 something dollars. I've had these for years and years and yeah. years, and it is the best investment you will make, especially if you have a 365. Trust me on that. Yeah. I have people at shooting club every month that are like, do you have your loader on you? And I'm like, go even, buy one. Even if you just shoot a little bit, just having a loader, even if they're easy to load, you're still pushing it down, back, down, back, and your mm -hmm. thumbs just kind of get tore yeah. up. You shoot yeah. three, four, five hundred 500 rounds, and it's, you yeah. know, you shot it. So I can just sit here and do this all day long. I do yeah. it all day, every, yeah. you know, all different guns. But that last round is just so tough to get in. So yeah. what this does, it has a little um, thing that depresses it. A little pusher downer. A little pusher downer. Hey, technical terms. That's what we do here. And you push down on it, and it pushes the spring down for you. So you just yeah. basically, and I'm, I know it's on camera, but it probably can't see it. You just drop it in, and boom, it's it's loaded, right? So you're going to want to use that. Boom, you push it down. Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Um, so think about the higher capacity guns, right? The 20 rounders yeah, that those, come with those springs. Thank you. Are yes, tight. Maglua. Yeah. Uh, it's up on your screen. I didn't give it to Rob, so thank you for finding that. Um, but yes, they are fantastic yeah. uh, things to invest in. The one we're showing you here in. is good for anywhere from 380 to 45 ACP, correct? Uh, Cartridge-wise, yes. and then single stack and double stack. Mm -hmm. And then they have some for 22s. They have some for AR-15 stuff like that. Yep. But, yeah. Yep. 
definitely speed loaders and some yeah. guns come with the speed loader um, they're not really speed loaders they're not great yeah. i don't even you know i've tried to use them and help people that bring them to class but i'm like just they're free for a reason they, they're not great they are not great okay. they uh, they have a use yeah. but they're not great this is the way to go for sure um and it is going to really save your thumbs yep. if you have 20 round mat even this one you know right yep. 10 12, 12 whatever 15. it is um, so really great uh, items that you're going to want to get and keep with. Um, you know, flashlight is something that you're going to want to keep close to where you store your... Why are you laughing? Flashlight? What? It's close to flashlight. I have no idea. What? Yeah. What is that? Yeah. yeah. Ew, why? Yeah. Is it gross? Yeah. You know, I don't want to know that. <laughs> okay, so flashlight. <laughs> you're going to want to have a flashlight at, near your home defense firearm as well so you can kind of shine it and you can you know kind of startle somebody that's in there you know in their face with yep. the light or you can use it to find your item that you need to find whether it's a key or your safe or whatever it right. is um so very important yep. um all right so those are some uh cool things that we hope help you kind of stay safe Follow the firearm safety rules. Absolutely. Very, very, very important, guys. Um, worth repeating if I can find them. Um, but the first rule, again, always keep treat your... Treat a gun. Well, treat a gun as if it's loaded, mm -hmm. right? Always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot or you've made the decision to shoot. Um, make sure the gun <laughs> is unloaded, right? It, unless yep. you're using it for defensive purposes. So that's all the only thing you can do. Mm -hmm. And then know the what, what's between you and your target and beyond. Correct. And that's very important for self-defense yeah. outside of, um, you know, the range kind of. When you think yeah. of when people go, oh, no, what's beyond your target? What do you mean? You know, and it's like, well, if you're in your home, right, and your husband's standing behind the assailant <laughs> or your children and you, and you are sleeping or something, or in what, the yeah, room yeah. behind where you're shooting, it yeah. could potentially go through the wall. Right? right. And things like that. So that's very important to know what's beyond your right. target. So that's what we mean by that when yep. we say that. Um, always point your gun in a safe Good direction. Yep. Very important. You yep. should not have, be shooting anybody by accident, including yourself, yeah. if but you're pointing your gun in a safe direction. You, you try to think of which one is most important. They're all. They all are most important. They're all very, very simple. important. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So firearm safety rules, guys, follow them. Um, let's bring that number yep. down. I don't like that number that I read earlier, that 400 and some odd mm -hmm. Floridians that are getting killed by accidental discharges. That is, that is too high of a number. And um, I don't like it. Yep. So uh, if you need any help with uh, training or anything like that, we would love to see you. If you're local in the Tampa Bay area, we'd love to yep. see you at one of our shops. We offer a plethora of <laughs> of that classes. Was the word of the day last week. <laughs> so it was. This week is flesh, whatever you just oh, said. No, okay. No, no. Um, so on your screen, um, the full Monty, of course, Handgun 101. We have advanced classes, defensive shooting, action pistol, um, intro to carbine, ladies only. So there is zero reason for you not to be trained That's in the correct. state, in, in Florida, uh, in the Tampa Bay area, because yep. we can train you. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So we have a special surprise for you, um, and April is and for um, him too. I think April it has a few military holidays, and we are uh, absolutely we love our military. Mm -hmm. Our daughter is military. Our uh, Shad's brother-in-law, and we have a lot of military members my of our brother. family. Her brother-in-law, my brother. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, and one of the holidays is on April 30th, and it is Military Brats Day, and that's Shad. That's He's me. a military brat. Um, so today we are super excited to have a special guest with us, Air Force Colonel Retired Jim Biltz. Yay. Come on in. Come on over. I'm going to let him man. sneak in here, young <laughs> man. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Thank you for coming. We, we have a saddle for him. We have do a have a saddle for Thank sure. You. Absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully you can get up on there. Belly yeah. up to the bar, young man. So <laughs> I am super excited to have uh mr biltz here yeah. um he is in town visiting beautiful sunny florida and uh and their vacation till the home. end yes and yes. my beautiful daughter-in-law yeah. oh thank you yes super and excited he's not here to see me it's okay <laughs> he's definitely here to see you yeah and i'm very excited we're having a little get together uh with all the family members coming over yep. um so we're very excited about that thank you for putting that together it's hard to wrangle the family together so when That's you come true. and visit we know we're going to see our children exactly. <laughs> because we don't see them that often but when you visit we see them so we're very yeah. very excited about that so 
Um, so Air Force Colonel retired. So how long were you in the Air Force? 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, a couple of things that you did in the military. You were a pilot, yes? Yes, I was a pilot. Served I in had, Vietnam. I had a year's tour in Vietnam as a forward air controller. Mm -hmm. And then I went back uh, later on and had a uh, <clears throat> six-month tour in B-52s. So cool. So How we about that? So from the smallest plane in the Air Force <laughs> to the biggest plane in the Air Force. At that time. Yep. So right. very cool. And we're excited to honor this badass who uh, I'm so <laughs> proud to call my father-in-law. Um, we're so happy to have you and yeah. thank you for your service. Um, so when did you introduce Shad to firearms? Like I believe he was probably about seven years old. Uh, mm -hmm. If I may go back. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course. I had a cousin who introduced me to to shooting, to, to guns and, and uh, shooting, who was a member of the uh, Indiana National Guard, Army National Guard. And he, awesome. And, of course, he'd been through their safety courses. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, he's the one that taught me how to awesome. shoot and how to handle a gun. Introduced to you safe. to firearms. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you introduced <coughs> Shad when he was? Seven years. Yeah. Around seven years. Young old. Buck. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Awesome. And... Um, and so when, let's fast forward a little bit. So how did you feel when Shad gave you the big news that uh, we were opening a gun shop? <laughs> Actually, you opened the gun shop. <laughs> and, uh, I was along for the ride. I, uh, I thought it was great. Uh, I know he had always been interested in guns. Yes. Yeah. And uh, to pursue that, <clears throat> that activity, uh, I thought was great, and I, I thought and have been has been proven that he had the personality yes. for sales, and he had the interest in guns, yes. and uh, that personality has proved proven. Yeah. Uh, to be very valuable in your in your business. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you for introducting him to guns and getting him um, the, getting blushing. the beginner knowledge that that he needed. And we are so proud of you, and we love you very much. So, uh, thank you. Welcome, and uh, we're glad Thanks to for have you. Down, Bell. Yes, <laughs> and we'll see you next Friday at six. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>